boat behind us is the world's fastest V-bottom, period. We think maybe they want 161 in their dreams. To uh, travel both boats on the same day across the same course would be fair. I doubt they can even run 160 mile an hour on a two-way run. We will always be the world's fastest V-bottom and we're going to continue to up, up the mark. If you can't run 160 plus, you don't even need to think about coming to this next run because it's going to be in the 170 plus range. Poker Runs America presents Performance Boat Television. Brought to you by OffshoreOnly.com. Experience the thrill of power boating online. To proclaim supremacy of speed is considered the holy grail of all motorsports. From the raw power of American stock car racing to the sophistication of Europe's most exotic machines, this right is the pinnacle of what motorsports is all about. And so too in the world of offshore racing. The quest for this holy grail is the driving force for most of the world's top factory teams and manufacturers. In the summer of 2004, the tiny coastal town of Washington, North Carolina became the battleground for these teams to prove once and for all who has the fastest V-Hull in the world. Home to fountain power boats, the Pamlico River maintains the reputation as one of the fastest bodies of water anywhere. Usually cool weather here when we do it, we got calm water. The shores uh, gradually go up so the waves dissipate. When they go out to the side, it keeps it uh, smoother out there. You know, it's a good straight run. Uh, a lot of records have been broken here, so you know we should get a good run here this weekend and get a good number up on them there. It's a great test bed for us. It's a great test bed for everybody. We got good long straightaways to get a good kilo in. The reputation here is it, it does have a very fast kilo. Maybe it's a little short. I don't know. No, I'm sure that's not the question. Yes. <laughs> in February, Reggie Fountain and the Fountain Race Team set an SBI sanctioned world record kilo run of over 160 miles per hour on the Pamlico River. And this weekend, in a new 42 Fountain Lightning, the Fountain Team will attempt to break that record. Yeah, we're about 1,200 pounds lighter. We have. Uh, 500 more horsepower and I'm still working on setup. You hear about setup all the time with Winston Cup. It's equally as important with boats as it is with cars. Also in February, in the frigid waters off Bristol, Rhode Island, Michael Fiore and the Outer Limits race team set an NPBA sanctioned world record at over 161 miles an hour. Well, we have the boat that we, that we have run already that's sitting behind us right now and uh, we're we're tweaking that boat and we've got some more mile an hour left and we're building another one just like it um, with some uh, different uh, propulsion and uh, you know we feel you know, the end speed number is, is it's, it's unlimited it just depends how fast we feel like going. This world record kilo run is set as the preliminary event to the third annual Superboat Offshore Grand Prix. It's an APBA UIM SBI uh, sanctioned event. So we're actually having just about every known recognizable sanctioning body here to record times here. And that will allow us to, to settle anything. Who's got the fastest V-bottom? Who has the fastest stock boat? Who has the fastest factory one? You know, it all boils down to this weekend. And that's what it's all about. And setting a world speed record isn't just important to the race teams. If you're a manufacturer and you can say we've got the fastest V-bottom on the water, that adds a lot of uh, credence to your product. And while the various classes will be competing for the record in their respective categories, it's the showdown between the V-hull and limiteds of Fountain and Outer Limits that's the main focus for many of the manufacturers on site. This is definitely the uh, best proving grounds. Uh, uh, they got the same engines, same propellers. Uh, the only difference is really the boat. So. Uh, you know, that's what's going to come down to, who's faster. We're really excited about them, as per usual. You know, it always comes down to the wire, trying to get everything done and set to go. Uh, but we're just now getting them, uh, starting to get them dialed in, and hopefully uh, we're going to have one unbelievable show. As the 42-foot Fountain Lightning fires up its twin 1,550 horsepower Sterling engines for its very first run, there is a problem. It's a brand new boat. Uh, 
It's a good lightweight boat, and this boat's really gonna be fast once we get everything resolved with it. Just having a few minor difficulties here with some water on top of our cylinder. We're just trying to figure out where we're getting it from. Driver Ben Robertson, sensing that the problem may be more serious than first thought, orders the boat back to the shop. We gotta go do a little machine work, that's all. Just a little plumbing changes. We weren't getting quite enough water into the motor. Uh, we got a little competition this weekend, which makes it interesting. So uh, may the best man win. That competition is Mike Fiore and the Outer Limits race team. Rumored to have a thousand more horsepower for this run than when they set their earlier record. Since the Outer Limits team has yet to arrive on site, the Fountain team immediately goes to work to try to correct a plumbing problem with the intercooler. With literally all hands on deck, Sterling Engine's Mike DeAnnabel gets involved to try and isolate the cause of the excessive water pressure in the engine. Right now, we've, uh, we're definitely down to the wire. I mean, the engines, the engines were finished just about a week ago, and they, that's all they had was a week to get them installed into the boat. I mean, time, we just flat out ran out of time, but uh, we're going to try and do our best anyway. With time running short for testing on the water, the Fountain team worked to put the intercooler back together while the other teams head out to the Kilo course. With little progress thus far on the 42 Lightning, Fountain decides to test run the Pier 57 boat as a possible backup for tomorrow's run. Okay, I'll try to watch all that. Owned by David Woods, this 42 Lightning also carries twin 1550 Sterling and can possibly reach the record-breaking speed. Fountain deems the run moderately successful and instructs the Pier 57 crew on additional modifications to get the boat ready for tomorrow in case it's needed. Back in the shop, isolating and correcting all the gremlins in the new boat is taking longer than the team anticipated, sacrificing valuable testing time on the water. That's pulling it down. You look at the blade, big scoops on the outside. You know, and uh, it's pulling that tail down and carrying that motor truck. And luckily, this is pushing down on the board. The board, there's no support, and it's bent the board down. That's what all this is going to find out look at. The pressure to get the boat back on the water mounts as Mike Fiore and the Outer Limits team arrive on site. How are you? Good to see you. Good to see if you. If there's a meeting, you need to go down to uh, see John at the far end. He would know all the APBA guys told us there's a meeting at uh, 6 tomorrow morning. Well, there'll probably be a meeting then, too. You would think there'd be one tonight, but I haven't heard it. Me either. Well, if you're not there and I'm not there, I guess we're in good Nobody's shape. There. Yeah. So While there remains a certain respect among the racers, there's a noticeable air of tension as Fiori and Fountain encounter each other. With only an hour or so of daylight left, the team thinks that they've solved the engine problems and put in for a single test run before day's end. Now, Reggie, if you don't hurry up, I'll leave it without it. Now, after six months of work and less than 13 hours before the official run, the crew may finally see the boat run as originally designed. As the boat idles out to the course, the support team awaits anxiously in the chase boat. The run proves to be successful, but other problems still remain. We're catching too much water pressure. We're riding up on the water piece back there, I think. This yes. thing's fast, though, I can tell you that. I don't know how fast. Make <laughs> adjustable? Just easing into this. It will be a long night for the Fountain team to finalize the boat for tomorrow's 7 a.m. run.
This front was supposed to push through last night on us. It didn't push through for us. So what we went ahead and decided to do for safety issues, we went ahead and decided to go with a one day delay. Tomorrow morning we're supposed to have uh, weather down to 60 degrees. We should produce some better horsepower for us. And we got some clearer weather. And plus I don't have to worry about boats running over 170 miles an hour in this. This delay buys some valuable time for the Fountain team in making the final preparations to their boat. While the rumor is that the Outer Limits team has been secretly testing their boat 20 miles downriver. If they really have a thousand extra horsepower and they can keep that thing in a straight line, we're going to have our hands full dealing with them. Yesterday, uh, when we put it in there, well, there's a lot of little things that added up to make monumental differences in it. And I didn't feel as good there at 140 or 45 as I felt the last time at 160, but this time I have a boat that can run 170 or 80 if I get it set up. With yesterday's engine problems stabilized, the crew will now take advantage of the postponement to fine tune the hydrodynamic aspects of the hull. No, no, can we take it and just, just not a whole lot because Radius is going to have a conemption fit. I want to just radius it just a little bit so it flows in here a little yeah, bit better. I put something mm -hmm. in The bottom of the boat is, is, is just as important as the actual power and the propellers. So we've designed these steps to, on most of these boats to run in 100 mile hour range. Now we're in the 170 mile hour range. So we're having to take some lift out of it. We're having to relieve the bottom just a little bit so that now it'll run a little cleaner, but still hold the boat to the water. We've been working on our water pickup so that we don't have as much drag in the water. We're trying to regulate the amount of water pressure going in through the engine. The postponement of the day's kilo run also becomes an opportunity for the other classes to make additional preparations. B-Stock current record holder, Velocity Power Boats, President and Founder Steve Stepp, weighs in on the importance of this run. It gives us a chance to prove that our bottom design is faster and with the stock engines, uh, you know, it doesn't matter how many you can buy, it's got to be stocked and certified that it's got uh, standard horsepower that comes from Mercury and any manufacturer can participate in it. So we put a lot of value in it because it really proves who's got the fastest bottom design, which we do is Velocity. A difference in the weight rules between the different sanctions now causes a problem. 4660. Well, it's definitely a big hiccup. You know, we've spent numerous hours testing with the way we had the boat set up, and, and weight-wise, we were right where we thought we were supposed to be, according to APBA. And then to come in on the SBI scales at 210 pounds too light, you know, it's definitely, you know, it, it's going to be, be an issue, but we're going to see how, how big of an issue it's going to be here in a couple of hours. An issue and a challenge, as Team Velocity must now add additional ballast to qualify. Champion throttleman Nigel Hook, here for the weekend's Grand Prix, has signed on with Vern Gilbert and the Patty's Seafood Boat to try to break the current record for the Superboat B class. Vern Gilbert asked me to help him with his boat. And I tell you, we went out about three weeks ago in, in Long Beach, where he's based out of. We ran the boat, and um, I, I was unimpressed. The boat handles nowhere like, like the boat I'm used to. So he made some changes to it, and it really came alive. And so I think we have a chance now of breaking the world speed record in this Super V Unlimited class. Bob Bull and Mitch Muller of CMS Racing is the only catamaran running in the Superboat Limited class. They'll try to break the current record of 115.36 miles per hour set in 2002 by APBA Supercat Light Dirty Duck, driven by Slug Hefner. Back in the water, the Fountain team prepares for their second test run, confident that the boat is now ready to go. The mood of the team lightens as the boat reaches the preliminary speeds first anticipated the day before. So we were running 155 then, and I had all this much throttle left. Just instead of being below 100, it got just over 100, about 110 on this side, none on that side. I looked down as running 155, and still just, just getting started. It, I mean, this thing's going to go somewhere. That was neat, though, to have that much left to run 155. I didn't even look at the tax. I don't even know how fast we were turning. I just know there was a lot left. <laughs> and I know if we turn this thing tight, we're running 108. 
With everything appearing to fall in place for Team Fountain, one unknown still remains. What will the Outer Limits team bring tomorrow? Race day, and the teams make their final preparations. Everything's come together now. All the problems been solved. All we got to do is jump out there, and fire it up, get rolling. Our confidence is there. And uh, like you asked me yesterday if we were confident, the last two days I've told you, yeah, and I'm still standing with that. So I'm ready to go. At the driver's meeting, the competitors get a final rundown of the rules and procedures. You have 15 minutes to make your start from the time he releases you. If you cannot make that start, at that point, you will be black flagged, you will return back, the next boat will then go. 15 minutes. The Lord has favored us, it's cool, which is fast. There's no wind, which is, which is fast. We're gonna see what we can do. We should be able to, to get a good run in. And what about Mike Fiore and the Outer Limits team? I caught up with Mike uh, via cell phone and he was already at the airport. He said that he had put the boat in the water at 530 down at Wiltshire's Beach and uh, in the rain and in the dark and uh, took it out for a run and uh, that the engine, he had some engine problems and uh, decided to, uh, you know, cut his losses and take it back to the shop. The order in which the boats run is based on the order that the teams originally signed in. First boat out on the course is the 42 Lightning in the V Unlimited class, throttled by Reggie Fountain with driver Ben Robertson. The course is a straight run for one kilometer, or five-eighths of a mile, marked by buoys at both ends. Each competitor completes a two-way run, first going with the current, and then back again in the opposite direction against it. The final speed is an average of this two-way pass through the kilo trap. Okay, get ready. Three, two, one, start. John Wishler, your time? One, three, point five, nine. While a new record was set, the Fountain team looks for more. 177 one way, 166 the other for 171 average. I've driven a lot of boats in my life. That is the most powerful, most awesome package I've ever, I've ever been in my life. I, Mike Danova with Sterling Motors, uh, Fountain Power Boats, that's an impressive combination of power. With, even with the herring propellers, it's just got so much left in the boat. We have a little tweaking to do, a little more balance work to do, and I think the boat, so we got another 15 left in it. SBI scored us both ways, and um, the average was about 171 or two. There's a lot more there. We can probably pick up on that a whole lot just with balance, and then a little more work on the boat for a few weeks, and 180, 85 is easy. The day seemed to belong to Fountain, as all three V Hull classes to set new speed records were Fountain power boats including a second run by Reggie Fountain and Ben Robertson in the 42 Lightning Rio Roses. The original boat that set the world's record back in February as an unlimited, now modified to a Superboat V with twin 750 Mercury engines. In the catamaran classes, the S12 Deep V Cats, running twin stock 2.5 offshore Merc outboards, set a new record at 107.130 miles per hour. And the number three CMS Castaway MTI surpassed the current speed record for Superboat Limited by more than 10 miles per hour with a final speed of 127.945. This setup here was nothing but top end where you need to get about three, you know, two and a half miles before you hit the slots and two and a half miles coming back. To hit a record like this, this is a, a, a you know, a, a big deal for our team. 
And while many of the other competitors ran just short of a record, none ran short of praise or admiration for what was accomplished here this weekend. On this water, you've got to take your hat off to Reggie Fountain. I mean, when you see the speeds he's posted today, it makes you wonder, all the hard work he's put in has paid off, but you know what? It, it just sets the, the limit for, it sets the bar actually, raises the bar for the competitors. And I think that's the great thing about this today. We've got some more work to do with the uh, Joe Paddy's seafood boat, uh, but we'll be back and uh, we think we can get that record. But Reggie keeps uh, making it harder and harder for us. Fortunately, we got a pretty good group of guys here and uh, I, I can sit there and appreciate what they're doing because I've done what all of them have done and they're really hard workers. And you know, if that whole group hadn't stayed on that fast boat for a whole day, we wouldn't have, I mean, we had them burning on that Don't thing for two or three fine. weeks, hey. and we still Don't need more it. time. But uh, when we get that boat right, we'll be able to look Back a lot better than we did then at 185 or so. You no, know, everybody's pushing it year after year, and the boats are getting faster and faster, and it's, it's great to see this kind of competition. It's disappointing that uh, the Outer Limits boat wasn't able to make it. They were here, and they broke down yesterday, they said, during testing early in the morning. But it would have been great to get the two of them out there together to have them both running. Uh, seeing if they could break that 170 mile per hour mark. And it is only a matter of time before today's record is broken, as the teams and manufacturers continue their quest for this holy grail of speed.